Should Bears offensive line coach and run game coordinator Chris Morgan get fired? Very simple question. I want to hear from you guys on Chicago Bears now. And if you think he should get fired, hit the thumbs up icon. Because we're going to talk about this on today's show. What the hell is Chris Morgan doing here? Is he any good? We explore all of it. And again, if you think he should get fired, hit that like button. My name is Harrison Graham. You are watching Chicago Bears now. Bears offensive line coach Chris Morgan, year three on this staff. Is it time to just fire him? Because this offensive line continues to be an absolute disaster. And I'm going to kind of outline it through the show. I really don't know what his impact has been up to this point, And he's been on this staff for three years. It's very puzzling to me. You look at week two, and again, Daniel Hunter and Will Anderson, we probably underestimated how good those guys were. I mean, obviously we knew they were good, but you got your ass beat. The biggest concern was I thought the interior would hold up better in this matchup, and Tevin's overall grade was decent at 72.7, but he struggled uh, in pass pro in particular. These PFF grades, regardless of their grades or whatever, if you just watch the game, this offensive line had major issues. It gave up 36 individual pressures. Caleb was pressured by at least one Texans player, if not multiple on several occasions, on 23 of 48 dropbacks. Um, it seems like some of these guys have regressed. Like, Tevin hasn't played as well this year. Darnell Wright just had one of the worst games of his career, albeit he played good in week one. Braxton Jones has been up and down. If nothing else, he was at least somewhat steady uh, the first couple of years of his career. Um, I don't know if Nate Davis has regressed from last year to this year, but from Tennessee to Chicago, he's clearly regressed. Um, and to me, yes, the players have to hold accountability, but I do just wonder, this Chris Morgan guy, does he hold any blame here? Because to me, if guys get worse and make mental mistakes and just miss assignments, that feels like coaching a little bit. And let's start there. A lot of missed assignments. The, f the next stunt your center and right guard pick up will be the first. I mean, these teams are running basic stunts on you, and you're not communicating and passing off block. It's just a disaster. It's like it's – like, Division two stuff, high school, like where, you know, delayed blitzes, they're crossing over the defensive tackles, like just kind of like these basic stunts that team run and you hope to crack one or two throughout the course of a game. You're giving up a ton of these week in and week out. This is this is the NFL, man. Like even if often certain players struggle to like hold blocks, the mental side of it should be pretty much automatic in the NFL. Like that that's a bare minimum at this level. And so for that to be a just constant issue, play after play after play, week after week, that's pretty concerning up to this point. Poor communication kind of dives back into that first one. Coleman Shelton at center has not held up well. There's been a lot of blown assignments, double and triple teaming one guy and letting another guy come unblocked. To me, that's a combination of coaching, the teaching that these guys are getting. Tevin Jenkins mentioned he was asked after the game the other night. Like, what's the issue with the offensive line? And he basically said, all we can do is, is go out there and execute what's being called. That felt like a little jab, like, hey, maybe what, what's being called isn't great. Um, so Shane Waldron, Chris Morgan, a uh, little hot seat action there from Devin Jenkins. I'm not sure. But uh, when you're missing this many assignments, to me, that, that points to the communi communication not being very good. Number three, even when things line up, naturally, you're just getting beat a lot. Now, it's hard to blame Chris Morgan on that entirely, but the offensive line coach needs to help players improve. How many of these guys have improved under Chris Morgan? Does Darnell Wright look like a better player this year than last year? I don't think he's looked way worse. I thought in week one he was good. Week two he was terrible. So it's like, yeah, okay, that's kind of a wash. He was up and down as a rookie too, but had some positive signs. But does he look like a guy who's taken a big jump, which is what you would want to see in year two? I don't see it. Does Braxton Jones look like a guy that's taken major steps throughout his career? I think he's gotten slightly better at times. He's become a serviceable starter, but it's not like he's taken off or anything. Nate Davis has gone the other way. Now, I think he's got to hold a lot of responsibility there. Um, but you're not seeing guys improve a lot, and that's a concern to me because 
Coaches, especially position coaches, their job is to help you maximize your abilities. And I don't feel like that's happening with this offensive line. And we'll have an example in a minute of a player who used to be here as an offensive lineman and struggled, go somewhere else, instantly better. And I think you guys are going to be pretty alarmed by who that player is. How concerned are you with the Bears O-line right now? Ten being you couldn't be more concerned. It's alarm bells. One being not at all, Harrison, you're overreacting. I'm at a ten. <laughs> like Usually when we do these scale of one to tens, I'm between like a three and an eight on most things. I'm at a 10. I am deeply concerned about the offensive line, considering all five starters are struggling. So here's kind of my big question. Why were the Bears so adamant about keeping Chris Morgan when they fired the rest of the offensive staff? I think Jim Dre's back to the tight ends coach. I'd have to double check. But they, they axed Luke Getze and the entire staff. But Chris Morgan is good enough to keep around? Did I miss something the last two years? Was this offensive line like better than expected? I think at times last year it was okay, especially as a run blocking unit. But what am I missing here? Like when you got an offensive staff, you got it. You don't you don't halfway measure it. Like I can't imagine Shane Waldron was that happy when he took this job and he was like, oh, by the way, you have to keep this offensive line coach. And on top of that. We're going to promote him to be our run game coordinator. Now, Shane took the job, so clearly he doesn't have a huge issue with it, and I'm not impressed with him so far, so I, I'm clearly not trying to absolve him of any of this. But it's just weird. When you make wholesale changes like that, you don't typically keep a position coach and promote him. Like, like that is bizarre, to say the least. Um, so I got a lot of thoughts, more things on this when it comes to Chris Morgan in the offensive line, but to me, he's got to be on the hot seat based on uh, what we've seen so far this year. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. If you're looking to go to a Bears game this year, no better place to do it than with Game Time. Football season is back and it's time to get off the couch and go watch your favorite teams play. I love Checking out my favorite teams in live stadiums, arenas, my favorite bands and performers in concert venues, theaters, etc. And with their new feature, Game Time Picks, it makes getting tickets to your favorite teams and events much easier. It'll filter out the fluff of all the kind of thousand of random tickets. They're going to kind of show you the best ones available, best bang for your buck, all that stuff. So uh, it makes surfing their app a lot easier. Uh, whether you're getting tickets for a sporting event, concert, comedy show, or anything else, Game Time has you covered with views from the seats, super deals, which are the best bang for your buck. Sometimes you get some discounts on certain tickets. And again, last minute tickets for the lowest prices guaranteed. So here's what I want you to do. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account. Use code CHATSPORTS. It's all one word, CHATSPORTS, to get $20 off your first purchase only right now. That's code CHATSPORTS, $20 off. Terms apply. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. You look at the Bears' rushing attack this year, right? Last two years. Oh, the Bears can run the ball. Well, it was a little skewed because Justin Fields was an elite running quarterback. In 22, the running backs were pretty effective last year. I think the Bears were actually 22nd in rushing uh, with their running back, so it's not like it was great last year. But it wasn't as bad as this. Uh, you're 28th in total yards and obviously yards per game. Uh, 29th in yards per carry at 3.5. DeAndre Swift, who you spent real money on, three years, 24 million bucks. He's 55th in the NFL in rushing with 48 yards. And his 2.0 average among qualified runners has to be like dead last. I'd be shocked if anyone was less, especially with 20-plus carries. Caleb Williams has actually kind of made the rushing attack look better than it actually is because he's got 59 yards on 10 carries. So, again, what does Chris Morgan do? The offensive line is terrible. They can't run the football. So you can't protect in the pass game very consistently. You can't run the ball and create running lanes. Why is Chris Morgan just this super-valued coaching member of this staff, and why did he stay despite you gutting the rest of the offensive staff, and you promoted him to your run game coordinator? Like, if I'm the Bears, you know one thing I'm trying to do? I'm, I'm giving Thomas Brown uh, more responsibilities in uh, the run game planning. He's the pass game coordinator. I I'm getting him more involved in the run game. Running back back or, uh, background, he's been a run game coordinator before. 
I, I think you got to get him more involved because I, what has Chris Morgan's impact been so far? They can't run the ball and they can't protect. Like, it, it, it's just not working. It's not working. And how about this? This will make your skin crawl. Lucas Patrick is one of the highest graded offensive linemen by PFF through two weeks. Now, it's two weeks, small sample size. The Saints have gotten up big on these teams, so it, it, maybe it's skewed a little bit. 92.6 overall, well above average as a pass blocker, elite run blocking. He's given up one pressure through two games. Like Lucas Patrick, the guy we couldn't wait to get out of town. He leaves uh, Chris Morgan and is instantly a whole lot better. Cody Whitehair, we thought he was completely washed, right? And granted, his overall grades haven't been that good through two games. 87 pass block grade against the Ravens. Last time I checked, Justin Matabike is pretty good on the interior for Baltimore. Pretty damn good grade. Like, how is this possible? Like These guys who look like cooked products, you think they have to retire, they go elsewhere. Not only do they start, they're better. <laughs> like, What is going on? Why is Chris Morgan viewed in this light? Like, am I missing something here? Like, Please help me out in the comments if there's something that you guys are seeing that I'm not. Because... Were the, was the Bears' offensive line good the last two years? Like, I thought at times last year they were decent. But, like, you don't keep decent just because you kind of like the guy. If you're going to fire your offensive staff, then fire your offensive staff. I, I, I just – these half measures, man, like, it, 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 it's just not effective. And then you promote the guy. Oh, just unbelievable. Subscribe to Bears now if you want these authentic takes, my reaction to things. We got you covered. We crossed 101,000 subs, trying to get to 102,000. Daily content here, lock us in. So what's next? Well, you got to do something to find a way to get the running game going. And you just got to eliminate the basic stuff, the basic mistakes. Pick up a stunt every once in a while. Pass off blocks. Like, <laughs> this is basic stuff. If you're going to lose one-on-one -on -one sometimes, hey, that's the NFL. But when free rushers are coming through untouched and cracking your number one overall pick, $25 million signing bonus quarterback, that ain't cool with me. You've got to get that cleaned up. You've got to get that figured out because you're going to kill this kid's confidence. We saw it with Justin Fields. We saw it with Mitchell Trubisky. I think this kid's better than those players as prospects. I think he can handle it. But if he's getting cracked like this week in and week out, it's going to be a long year. And – None of us want that for the Chicago Bears. All right, appreciate everybody for making it to the end of the video. If you did, that makes you a real one. Follow me on Instagram at HGramNFL. DMs are wide open, and we'll see you guys soon. Bear down.